Welcome to the Taste Touch channel and this week we'll be taking an impartial look at popular apple varieties from around the world to discover what the differences are and how some of the best selling apples around the globe differ in taste. And trust me, it's actually a lot more interesting than it might initially sound. As always, just for fun, we'll be awarding our Taste Touch channel best in class award to the winner and if you're new to the channel, be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss any of our regular taste tests. So a very quick overview about apples. They've played quite a key role in mythology and folklore across the ages, being a fruit of the gods in Greek and Roman times, the forbidden fruit of knowledge in the story of the Garden of Eden, a sign of love or fertility, a giver of eternal life, and even a symbol of the dead. My personal favourite though is the one that says that unicorns live beneath apple trees and that if you creep quietly into an orchard on a foggy morning, you might just spot one. Apples are thought to have first been domesticated up to 10,000 years ago in the Tian Shan Mountains of Kazakhstan in Central Asia and later made their way along trade routes to Europe and crossed with wild crab apples. Speaking of their cultivation, you might be intrigued to learn that you can grow an apple tree by planting an apple seed, but it won't be the same type of apple as the one you planted. That's not to say you plant a Granny Smith seed and get a Golden Delicious, but the apple will take on new characteristics a technique which helps a species protect itself against disease. Almost all apple trees, therefore, are produced by grafting two plants together, and they also need to be cross-pollinated by the flowers of a different variety in order to produce fruit. Not surprisingly then, there's over 7,000 different apple types out there, and we can only scrape the surface, but our lineup of some of the most popular around the globe and their country of origin are as follows. The iconic long-time favourite from the USA, Red Delicious. England's most popular offering, the Cox's Orange Pippin. The most grown apple in the world today, originating from New Zealand, the Gala. One of the most recognised apples on the planet, from Australia, the Granny Smith. The fast growing apple brand from Belgium, Kanzi. And finally, said to be the sweetest apple available from Japan, Fuji. Price-wise, most of these apples are widely available around the world. Many of them are also grown globally, with the flags indicating their original birthplace, but the cost to get hold of them may well differ depending on where you're based. You can see the price that I paid per apple is shown below. As you can see, Red Delicious was the most expensive, and Granny Smith and Cox's were the cheapest. Nutritional-wise, the Victorian saying goes, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. And indeed, a recent Oxford study concluded if an apple were prescribed daily to the over 50s, in the UK alone, there'd be over 8,000 less heart attacks a year, with the effects said to be similar to taking cholesterol-lowering statins. Like many fruit and veg, apples are high in fibre, antioxidants and vitamins, with just negligible amounts of fat and sodium. But average energy and natural sugar levels per apple is shown below. Unfortunately, I can only show an average, as grocery stores tend to show the same stats regardless of variety. In reality though, sugar levels can vary from about 10 through to 18%, with red apples usually containing more sugar than green. But how will all of this affect the taste? Well, that's why we're here. So we'll start with a variety that for a long time was the most popular apple in the world, Red Delicious from the USA. In many ways, this has become the modern-day go-to image of an apple, despite the fact it looks nothing like the majority of apples. They first appeared in the 1870s, and like many great discoveries, were a complete accident. Farmer Jesse Hyatt discovered a rogue tree in his orchard in Iowa, and cut it down several times before allowing it to do its thing, and to his surprise, produced an impressive new type of apple, crisp and full of flavour. But here's the thing, they didn't look or taste like this. They had yellow streaks and exceptional sweetness. The rights were sold to a nursery, who later gave it the strategically brilliant name Red Delicious and sales soared around the globe. Its popularity, though, was actually its downfall, as over time commercial growers chose longer-lasting strains with thicker and thicker peels and redder and redder skins, until at last it had lost so much of its original flavour that demand declined. So much so that Congress had to bail out the US apple industry after disastrous losses in the 1990s. In 2018, after 50 years at the top, it finally lost its spot as the most grown apple in the US. And we'll find out its replacement shortly. By the way, as their flesh breaks down quickly, they're not considered a good choice for cooking. So what we're going to do is slice up all our apples first so we can compare them visually side by side and then we'll move on to the tasting. 
So let's cut one in half. So quite a thick skin to slice through with a firm and juicy fibrous flesh. And the aroma is fairly weak, just watery apple tones. But I'll look forward to tasting it after we've seen the others. Next from England, Cox's Orange Pippin, or Cox's as we often call them, which account for more than half of the apples grown in the UK. The Cox was first discovered as a chance seedling in 1825 in the garden of Richard Cox, a retired English brewer. But it was a prestigious first class award from the Royal Horticultural Society decades later that propelled it on its destiny of becoming the most popular apple in the UK. Like many rosy-cheeked urchins of the time, its exact parentage is unknown, but it's believed to derive from another type of pippin, and possibly a russet. It's famous for its complex flavours, but unfortunately it's difficult to grow, prone to disease, and requires a UK-type climate. So although grown in parts of Europe, you'll rarely find them in America. But hey, with all our rain and grey skies, we had to have something to cheer us up. You can use them in cooking, as they don't mush, but they're most commonly eaten as they are. So let's take a slice. As you can see, the sizes really vary from apple to apple on coxes. So a snappier flesh to cut through and a much thinner skin. The aroma is also richer on this one, with warm sweet notes coming through and just a hint of nuttiness. Next, hailing from New Zealand, the Gala apple, which is in fact a grandchild of the two apples we've just talked about and has become one of, if not the, most popular apples in the world. It's also the one who stole Red Delicious's top spot in the US. In the 1920s, New Zealand orchard owner James Kidd was experimenting with crossing American apples with English ones. Using Red Delicious and Cox's Orange Pippin as the parents, he produced a brand new offspring he named Kidd's Orange Red, which was to become the parent of this gala apple. For years, he produced dozens of different hybrid seedlings, but it was a fusion of his Kids Orange Red creation and the US Golden Delicious that resulted in the Gala apple being born. Today, Gala is grown in vast quantities all over the world. It can be eaten raw and cooked, and it's said to be especially suited to making sauces. And let's see how it slices. So much softer to cut into, thin-skinned and a stronger aroma too. Deeper and sweeter apple tones with a hint of fermented notes like some melons have. So I'll be curious if that's also in the taste. Next, from Australia, one of the most widely recognised apples in the world, the Granny Smith, which I'm pleased to report is named after a real granny and she even has an annual festival in her honour. In 1868, Maria Ann Smith, a well-known elderly lady with a small orchard in New South Wales, found a chance seedling in a compost heap, thought to have come from French crabapple seeds. She propagated the plant and sold the resulting shiny green apples at the local weekly market. After she died, local growers named the fruit in her honour, and the apple later won a national award for best cooking apple. Due to its thick, robust skin, resistance to bruising and impressively long shelf life of up to a year, it was one of the first apples to be exported to supermarkets globally, and as such why it's so familiar all over the world and popular to this day. As mentioned, you can certainly use it for cooking, as was its original purpose. So let's cut one in half. So firm and dense to cut, and the heaviest feeling apple for its size. The aroma is quite sharp with citrus notes of lime. In fact, it's making me wince just smelling it and sends me right back to childhood where it played a regular, but I must admit not hugely welcome addition to my school pet lunch. Nevertheless, I will be tasting it objectively, I promise. Next, from Belgium, the Kanzi apple, one of a growing number of trademarked apple brands where rights to its production is owned entirely by just one company. The idea of this fairly new concept is that more investment goes into producing superior apples as they retain more of the resulting profits. Kanzi, which they say means hidden treasure in Swahili, was discovered in Belgium in 1992, a cross between a Gala and a Brayburn, both hailing from New Zealand. After 10 years of refining and testing, Green Star Kanzi Europe launched it commercially in 2004. Since then, its popularity has grown rapidly and it's now the second biggest branded apple variety in the world, produced in 13 countries across five continents. They hold their shape and juiciness so can be used in baking and keep for several weeks in the fridge. So let's see what it's like inside. So softer to slice than the last one, but retaining a crunch and a strong aroma with full and sweet apple notes. 
I'll be keen to taste it. Finally, from Japan, the Fuji apple, which is so popular in Japan that they barely bother with other varieties. The Fuji was no accident. It was created in a research station in the late 1930s in Fujisaki, hence its name, and it's considered to be one of the sweetest apples available in the world. Its parents are two Americans, Red Delicious and Old Virginia Rules Janet, and its sweet crisp flavour is said to be reminiscent of the Nashi pear. Fuji has been available commercially since the 60s, and today its popularity is fast growing. It's already the third most popular apple in the US and is sold worldwide. On top of all this, it can last up to a year when refrigerated and it holds its shape when baking. So with so many plus points in its favour, I'm really curious to see how it compares in taste. Apparently you get quite a lot of variation of skin colour of Fuji's, so you may find it looks a little bit different each time you buy it. So let's slice this monster in half. So crisp and fibrous looking. Very little aroma though, just light juicy watery notes, similar to Red Delicious in fact. But we'll see how it compares in taste shortly. So looking at them all side by side, you can see the differences more clearly, both inside and out. Red Delicious and Fuji have the palest flesh and are arguably also the two stunners of our lineup, one looking like something out of a storybook and the other in blush pink and the size of a grapefruit. Granny Smith has a lovely sheen to it too, and green-white hues inside, with the other three having more yellowy flesh tones and varied skin colouring. But with all this in mind, I'm really curious to discover just how much they vary in taste. Now, apples will of course differ in flavour anyway, based on seasonality, freshness and growing conditions. To ensure as thorough a test as possible, in the background I'll be tasting two or three of each of them from different growers and as fresh as possible. And with all that said, Let's move on to the tasting. So we'll start with the iconic Red Delicious from the USA. So a big watery crunch and very juicy. It's like hundreds of micro bubbles bursting in your mouth as you bite it. The skin is thick and leathery, quite tough to get through. It's mildly sweet, but it's a bit bland, less than it has been as they have started trying to reintroduce some of its original qualities, but still quite watery. In summary, not much depth of flavour and slightly let down by the skin, but really crisp and refreshing, with a very clean finish. I can't think of a better apple to have if you were really hot and thirsty. Next we'll try Cox's Orange Pippin from the UK. So more of a dense snap than a crunch from this one, an immediate burst of sweetness and a softer overall feel, but not at all flowery. It's sweeter but with a caramel richness, like brown sugar compared to white, also warm tones of orange, a nuttiness to the thin skin and just a touch of tart acidity in the finish which adds balance. Overall much more rich and complex, to me it tastes like a freshly scrumped apple from an orchard. If I'd only had these back in my school lunch boxes instead then happy days. Next we'll try Gala from New Zealand. So a much softer bite, an initial snap but then a flowery textured flesh. It's the sweetest so far and a full flavour with those melon tones detectable but now with a fragrant sweetness. It's low in acidity, thin skinned and easy on the teeth. If you were trying to get kids to eat more apples this would be a good one to go for. But the letdown for me is the soft pasty texture. It leaves a mushy grainy residue so the finish is far from clean. In fact you almost need to swish your mouth out after eating it. So for me that's a big downside. Next we'll try Granny Smith from Australia. So a nice big crunch from this one with tightly packed juicy flesh. The skin is thick and snappy but not leathery so a good crisp texture. As for flavour, lime citrus, hints of grassiness and green fruits and lashings of sour acidity with not much sweetness. In fact you can feel it stripping the enamel off your teeth as you eat it. It really is just one small step away from being a cooking apple. In summary though, if you like eating things that make your face pucker up and your eyes water, this is the apple for you. Next we'll try the Kanzi brand apple from Belgium. So a very firm snappy initial bite, fresh and juicy, followed by some flowery graininess to the flesh but less than gala. The skin is thin with a trace of chew. It's sweet and full flavoured with hints of those brown sugar tones we noticed in the cox but not as rich along with a sharper acidic tang which adds a nice balance. Overall though a good snap and a unique mix of flavours, a bit like a cross between a gala and a cox. 
and well worth seeking out. Finally, we'll try Fuji from Japan. So firstly, this is massive and looks amazing. You feel like a kid biting into it. There's a huge watery crunch, bursting with juice, very reminiscent of Red Delicious, but without the leathery skin. This has a thin, crisp outer layer instead. It's also sweeter, but not as sweet as I expected. Less so than the Gala Cox or Kanzi, in fact, but sweet enough and very juicy. It's very low acidity, no sharpness and no pastiness. It's crisp, with an exceptionally clean finish, like you've just had a drink. In short, it's like a much better version of Red Delicious. I don't understand why they're not everywhere. I've found these quite hard to get hold of, and yet they are brilliant. So that covers how they all differ in taste. And now that we've tasted them all, as always, just for fun, we award our Taste Test Channel winners and Best in Class award. All six of these apple varieties have pros and cons, and picking your favourite will always come down to personal preference. By the way, another note in Granny Smith's favour, in case I was a bit harsh earlier, I can't think of a better apple to pair with cheeses, dried fruits and pickles. Sometimes that sharp tang is just what you need for balance. It's also as heavy and hard as a cricket ball, so if you think you hear an intruder and you're near the fruit bowl, then it's going to do some damage if you hurl it at someone's face. But our top three winners this week are as follows. Winning third place... Kanzi from Belgium. Sweet, snappy and full flavoured. They're easy to eat and have a distinct mix of sweet and tangy that makes them unique. Winning second place, Fuji from Japan. A bigger, bolder and sweeter red delicious but with a crisp skin for easy eating. By far the most refreshing of the lot. It doesn't have the fullest flavour but it surely is an amazing apple with a lovely texture and no acidity. And you heard it here first, I would not be surprised if these are set to take over the world. But in first place this week in the popular apples from around the world, the Taste Test Channel Best in Class Award goes to Cox's Orange Pippin from the UK. It's not what I'm used to, as I wasn't lucky enough to have these growing up, but I can't escape the fact that when you bite into one of these, the taste literally just fills the senses. There's so much going on. It's like a freshly picked, tightly packed parcel of autumn, evocative of bonfires, scrumping and toffee apples. A worthy winner in my book, so well done to Cox's Orange Pippin from the UK. And as always, taste is subjective and this is purely my point of view, but I hope it's provided some useful insights. So I've certainly enjoyed making this episode. I really hope you've enjoyed watching it. And thank you so much to every one of you who likes, comments and shares our videos with fellow food fans. It really does make all the difference. And my endless gratitude to our wonderful handful of patron supporters. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss any of our regular taste tests. Meanwhile, thanks for watching. Toodle pip and hope to see you again soon.